Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to uh, walk you through how to use the T9 connector um, and how to, to put that into the assembly file that we have for the car. Um, the connector seems to cause more problems than anything else and uh, after a few times of going through the process it became evident to me why um, and it has to do with being able to just take a look at the side view of the connector here. Okay, If you look closely you'll notice that this edge, while being vertical, is not squared up with this. There's not a 90 degree angle here. So this front and bottom, the top and bottom, excuse me, are slanted. And the same thing goes for the front of the face. Okay, And the problem is then that whenever I try to connect it to, say, the one block socket here, that this has all 90 degree angles on the inside. So you're trying to flush a vertical wall with a vertical wall here and a flat wall on the bottom that's horizontal with a non-horizontal wall on the bottom of the connector. Okay? And that causes issues. You can't flush both of those at the same time. It's just not possible. So you get a lot of error messages typically whenever you're trying to add that connector in. And it can be very frustrating for a student that's just starting out. Okay? So if you've gone through this, don't feel bad. You're probably in the large majority here. Most students, I would say, are beginners. Even myself, whenever I went through and got trained and my first time through it, it took me a little bit to realize this. Okay? Um, so if I want to really get this thing to line up, Here's the easiest way to do it, okay? First of all, I'm going to free rotate this particular piece, and I'm going to move it around so the one block piece, this bar here, has got to line up with this thing here. So I'm going to kind of align it a little bit. It takes a little bit of doing, and I don't know, about right there. Okay, that's pretty darn close, okay? Before I go any farther, though, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the T9 block socket, and I'm going to take this plane here, Notice I expanded the origin menu, and I'm going to make it visible. I'm going to do the same thing for this X E plane. I'm going to make it visible. Okay, so now you see I have a work plane that cuts, and it's, it's inside the one block socket because it's the planes that, I, that were there when I originally built the IPT files in the first place. Okay, so I have the horizontal and vertical work planes. Now, I'm going to come down to the connector piece. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to expand the origin menu. I have a vertical plane here that I'm going to make visible, and I have the horizontal plane that I'm going to make visible. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, instead of constraining the parts to each other, I'm going to constrain the work planes to each other. So when I click constraint, it's either a mate or a flush. I don't really know. We're going to find out real quick. Okay. But I'm going to take this arrow, so that arrow points to the right, and I'm going to mate it with this arrow, which points, well, that's also to the right. So that's going to be upside down. We need to actually flush those. Okay. I'm going to click OK. That did all sorts of weird stuff here with my alignment, so I'm just going to drag this off to the side and make it a little bit easier for myself. Okay. The next step is I'm going to constrain the horizontal plane. So that one's pointing up. See what happens when I click on this one. Okay. You can see how it went backwards, right? I can tell because this thing went in backwards that I needed to choose this direction instead. So I'm going to choose flush instead of mate. That's how I flip them around. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to take this piece. I'm going to pull it out. So now you can see if I'm looking at it from the front, okay, that the work planes are aligned. In fact, I can't move it at all from the front. Let's look at it from this way. Okay, I'm allowed to slide this thing in and out. But if I look at it from any other angle, it's not allowed to move left, right, up, or down. Okay, It's only allowed to move, to move in or out. And so I think the last step then for constraining this, now that we've constrained the work plane, now I can go through to get it the right depth. I'm just going to do a flush constraint between this here and this surface here. Click OK. The T9 connector is now fully constrained with my sketch. We're going to do the same thing on the back side, which I don't think, no, I haven't even added anything on the back side. Okay? We're going to do the same thing in the back side, and we're going to do the same thing when we connect it to the front of the vehicle up here. We're going to have another two-block socket that we've got to connect it to. So, in other words, the point is, work planes are your friends, and when all else fails, if you're struggling to constrain things together, consider making the work planes visible by coming over here to Origin and expanding the menu inside each part, not, not the Origin folder for the assembly, not this guy, okay? The one that's actually inside of the connector part. Okay, it's inside these menus here. But make those work planes visible and use those and constrain and align those instead of the parts themselves. Just a little tri trick that we've picked up from going through this process a few times in a row. 
I hope that helps you out. I know it'll help you with the training. It'll definitely help you on this as well.